All right, everyone, welcome to the first ever episode of Micro News, the show where we cover the top stories in the embedded world, dealing with things like Raspberry Pi, SparkCore, Tessel, and others. Thanks for joining us. Nobody's joining us yet. This is the very first episode. But let's hop right into the news of the week. Gert Van Loo, creator of the popular Gert board and Gert Duino, is at it again. He has created the Gert VGA, which is a nifty little adapter that you can hook onto your Raspberry Pi model B+. It will only work on the B+. It's the only version that has enough pins available. Uh, and basically turns those GPIO pins into a VGA adapter. Uh, they claim that the resolution on this is pretty dang close to what the HDMI output can give you and can be controlled independent of the HDMI. So what does that mean for you Pi lovers out there? Dual monitors could be coming soon. Now, the software is still in development for that dual monitor uh, access. They do have a demo for that up uh, showing it working. Uh, but they said it's still being developed and uh, it does use quite a bit of SD RAM. Uh, so performance on that is, is still to be uh, determined when you're running both of them together, but still pretty cool. Uh, it's going to take up most of your GPIO pins on that Model B+. Plus. Uh, it needs that many pins to create the VGA signal. Now, how do you get your hands on one of these GERT VGA adapters? Well, that's another catch as well. They are not being mass produced at this point. He has open sourced it so you can get all of the Gerber files and other things. Uh, so that you could build them yourself. Uh, at this point, I would still recommend you get an adapter. Those are can be a little pricey, but after fabbing a PCB and assembling all this and trying to get it all together and working, you're still probably better off at this point buying an adapter, but uh, not to say that some group of people might not get together and start uh, running batches of these and selling them. So we will keep an eye on it and keep you updated as we get more on that. Probably the biggest story this week is the release of the Intel Edison development platform. It is a uh, tiny embedded development platform. I don't have one, but I have printed out a two scale version here to give you an idea of the size there. And from Intel, it says the Intel Edison development platform is designed to lower the barriers uh, to entry for a range of inventors, entrepreneurs, and consumer product designers to rapidly prototype and produce Internet of Things and wearable products. Uh, I'm not sure why they went with wearable there of all things that they could have done, but uh, they did give a shout out to Internet of Things. That's all the rage. So uh, it is a, a, a tiny, fully capable development platform. Uh, again, to give you a, a, an idea of the size of this thing, uh, here is the two scale printout of it next to a Raspberry Pi. Um, and then we also have a spark core here that we can compare to. It's about the size of a spark core if uh, you've seen or if you have one of those. So anyway, the specs on this thing are pretty impressive. Uh, it has a 70 pin connector to it uh, that exposes 40 GPIO pins. With those pins, you can do things like SPI, I2C, UART, all the standard things that you're going to find on any development platform. Uh, it has USB 2.0, uh, Bluetooth. It has a dual core, let's read this here, dual core, dual threaded Intel Atom CPU running at 500 megahertz, along with a 32-bit Intel Quark microcontroller running at 100 megahertz. Uh, it's got a gig of memory and four gigabytes of flash. Uh, now this thing is not like a Raspberry Pi in that it does not have an HDMI output on it. Uh, you could accomplish display type applications uh, through the SPI and other uh, peripherals that are exposed to the GPIO. As far as input power, we're looking at 3.3 to, to sorry, 3.3 to 4.5 volts. Uh, so that's also going to limit you from using any of those adapters that you have doing 5 volts to some of your other platforms. Um, and the native voltage on this is 1.8 volts. So if you're going to connect it to anything external, uh, sensors or other things like that, you're going to need some sort of level shift uh, to get to the 1.8 volts. Now, uh, what's the price of this little guy? You are looking at $50 if you pick it up from Newegg or SparkFun. Uh, it looked like it was $65 on Mauser. Not sure why, why that would be more expensive there if they have some sort of distribution deal with those uh, other sites. And you can also get it from uh, Makershed. Intel has produced an Arduino compatible board that goes along with this. 
And uh, SparkFun has created quite a bit of modules that can interconnect with it as well. Uh, we'll link some of those up uh, in the description so you can head on over there. Now, uh, the community on this is still very fresh. Currently, there's only one project on the Intel site, um, which I think they dropped the ball a little bit on that one. It would have been nice for them to at least have a few up there. And the one that is up there is a complicated looking wearables project that uh, I don't think speaks to a ton of the community, but they're trying and uh, it's something new and we'll see how it fares. Um, a lot of talk about it this week and uh, congratulations to Intel. All right, next up, one of the most popular links this week is to the new Batborg uh, found on the PyBorg website. It is a little module that uh, can take anywhere from 7 to 36 volts uh, from virtually any battery or battery pack and power your Raspberry Pi. It has a super efficient voltage uh, DC to DC converter on it. Uh, that gives you close to 90% efficiency, which means you can drive the Raspberry Pi. It can output about one and a half amps uh, and can do that without having a heat sink, which is pretty cool. Now, they did an astonishing test on their website uh, where they power the Raspberry Pi Model B Plus with eight rechargeable AA batteries for 14 and a half hours, which I thought was pretty impressive. So uh, you can find that from the PyBorg website. We'll link it up for you. Uh, so you can head on over there and check that out. It comes in a few different kinds of kits. If you feel like doing the soldering yourself, you're looking at uh, $16. Uh, if you want it pre-assembled, you are looking at around $20. So uh, the Batborg uh, found on the PyBorg website. All right, so this past week, if any of you were paying attention, Apple had a pretty big live event where they announced a boatload of new things, uh, not least of which was the new Apple Watch. Shortly after its release, the Pi community took to the interwebs and not to be outdone showed that they too could disrupt the timekeeping market. Which brings us to our first ever tweet of the week. And that goes to Alba for posting this pretty cool picture of the disruption in timekeeping that you can accomplish with the Raspberry Pi. So thanks a lot to Alba. The only thing that it is missing, however, if you look closely, is that there's no digital crown. Maybe in version two. All right, that does it for the first episode of Micro News. We'll be back next week with the top stories sharing all things embedded systems and DIY hacking. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.